Konnichiwa, and welcome to episode 44 of the Leadership Japan podcast. And I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, president of Dale Carnegie Training Japan. And much more importantly, you are a student of leadership, highly motivated to be the best in your business field. And if you would like your own access to 102 years of the accumulated wisdom of Dale Cutting your training through free white papers, guidebooks, reports, training videos, blogs, course information, plus much, much more than go to japan.dalecarnegie.com. Today's topic is bad presentation skills break your brand. When we present, be it in an internal meeting, or in the public arena, our personal brand is being evaluated. Actually, in the case of public presentations, there are two brands being scrutinized by our audience, our personal brand and our organization's brand. We judge companies and organizations based on our exposure to their people. In a public setting, we come away from the presentation either impressed or otherwise based on the performance of the representative we've just seen in action. Uh oh. I attend an average of eight to ten public presentations every month. And as a public speaker, I am up to nearly 500 myself. I see simple things that are detracting from the message because the delivery is so unprofessional. We know that when the delivery component of what is being said and the message itself don't match, the message is almost totally lost. The irony is that the worst offenders continue to bang away regardless, believing that the quality, well, in their own minds, quality, will outweigh any personal flaws they may have in getting the message across. Oh, my content is good, so I don't have to be a good presenter. The quality of the information is more important than some mumbo-jumbo presentation skills. I know I'm not a good speaker, but people come here for the data, not for me. Delusional is the best word to describe this thinking. Make no mistake, we judge you and your data. We make assumptions about the level of your professionalism and your organization's credibility based on what we see and hear. Bosses, please do not send out technical experts to speak publicly who are clueless and guaranteed to tear your brand asunder. Give them the proper training, prepare them, and make them a brand ambassador, a brand saint. Here are some simple presentation mistakes easily corrected. A reasonable presentation by someone who had long experience in the industry was severely diminished by three errors. The first was to use the screen as his prompt for the content. He would ignore the audience, turn backward, look up towards the screen behind him, and thereby surrender the opportunity to make eye contact with those gathered. He also read off the screen. Turning your back on the audience doesn't enable you to watch for their reactions to what you're saying. Or to drive home the key points by using your eye power. The second problem was a common one, the misusage of PowerPoint, or the misuse of PowerPoint. Too much detail on a screen is hard to digest. It diffuses the key points being made and distracts from you, the main part of the presentation. That is right, you are the main part of the presentation, not what is up on the screen. We buy you and your information or point of view comes with the purchase. Another unfathomable choice was use of color. Red on black is always going to be a losing proposition from a message clarity point of view, especially on a busy screen. It may look hip on your laptop screen when seated 20 centimeters away, However, by the time it goes through whatever random selection process there is for the in-house projector and backing screen, 
the hypnos factor dissipates rapidly into incomprehension. This is accentuated when the distance from the screen to the audience becomes 10 meters or more. On the subject of projection tools, another recent presentation used a wall-mounted whiteboard as a screen in a room where the audience was reasonably close to the presenter. Too much reflection of strong white projector light off the whiteboard combined with black text content on a white slide background produced snow blindness. The content became insipid and hard to read. A better choice would have been white text on a dark blue background for contrast, a relatively simple but highly effective change. Back to our hapless hero. Another self-inflicted wound to his personal brand was Q&A time. Now, we are all 100% in control during our presentations, but this is all out the window once the floor is open up to question time. If you know what you're doing, you never lose control of the proceedings, even when you plunge into the dark hole of question time. Sadly, our presenter didn't know what he was doing, and that lack of ability to handle questions professionally was like watching the life force ebb from the body of his professional image. Another day, a different presentation, and a different set of unforced errors. Take careful note of your speaking venue. If you are trained properly, the layout will tell you immediately what you need to do to accommodate the various peculiarities on offer. Now, this particular venue was a bit special. It was quite wide, but not so deep, with the screen right in the middle. Now, the speaker chose to use a microphone, when actually for that size and layout of the venue and the power of his voice, it wasn't really necessary. Use a microphone when you need to be heard. Otherwise, give up the option provided by the organisers, who are usually not public speaking experts. Having a microphone means you have only one hand free for gestures, and often you are locked into the positioning of the microphone on the mic stand on the podium, so you're, not, you're really restricting yourself unnecessarily. Actually, there was a podium kindly provided by the organisers to rest the laptops upon. Now, the propensity is to get stuck behind this pseudo laptop stand, aka called the podium. This means half of your body is no longer visible to the audience, so you are giving up access to half of your body language unnecessarily. Shortish? Are we allowed to stay short? People should be very careful. I have seen many a combination of high podium and a bobbing talking head just making it above the waterline. It is not a great look. Get the organisers to get you something to stand on, or even better, get rid of the podium. This often applies to women who are not so tall, getting stuck behind a big podium, and they just get lost. The final nail in the coffin for our speaker was his foot placement. Foot placement, you ask? When we stand with our feet facing at a certain angle to the audience, we can find our upper body is now positioned such that we unconsciously favour one side of the room over the other. Our speaker in question ignored half of his audience without even being aware of the fact. He could have compensated by turning his body to the left to include that part of the audience, but we are asking the upper body to talk against our natural body angle and we just don't want to do it. Better to stand with the feet facing at 90 degrees to the audience. This means our shoulders will face nicely forward, neither favoring one side nor the other. Now in this position, just rotate your head so your eyes can use eye power with every pocket area of the room, left, right, back, close. The final example, this is from another presentation done by a group of speakers, was the misuse of technology. Video and audio are great when they work properly. 
oh, there is nothing so brand destructive as when your IT person is one of the speakers and they can't get the equipment to work either. It is a schadenfreude derived amusement for the assembled crowd of non-IT experts as they watch the IT person meltdown. But it's sad and destructive for your personal and organizational credibility. Make sure that the benefit of using the video is worth the risk. If it isn't really, really central to your message, then just drop it and replace it with something a million times more powerful. You. Don't use video as a substitute for you. Don't use video as a crutch for your failings as a presenter. You'll get yourself into more trouble if it doesn't work. If you do need it, then load all the speaker videos onto the one laptop. And by the way, have a fully loaded backup back laptop ready. Embed the videos. Don't even think of trying to use Wi-Fi and test it all beforehand for all of the presentations. If something goes wrong anyway, don't grab the toolbox and try and get under the hood. Abandon the video at that point and just tell your audience the key points you were going to get across via the video. Keep tap dancing and move onward. Don't have your audience become bored contemplating the hair on the top of your head, even if it's ravishing and luxuriant, while you visibly panic at the keyboard trying to bang away on keys to get the damn thing back up. These are a few examples of brand destroying unforced errors from the front line, which can be easily fixed. There is no excuse really. Get clued up, get the training, and stop embarrassing yourself and your organization. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan podcast. Remember to access your Dale Carnegie training, free white papers, guidebooks, training videos, blogs, course information, plus much, much more. Go to japan.dalecarnegie.com.